Being that there's a Vision Pro, does that actually mean that there's a more affordable Vision coming soon? As yes, Mark Gurman has already chimed in that there is a non-pro variant in the works, but the compromises are interesting. We've got detailed specifications of all the camera improvements on the Pixel 8 series, and they're major, and it seems Samsung actually does want to take advantage of that outer display on the Galaxy Z Flip 5. I'm Jaime Rivera, and I know, jet lag never looked this bad on a Monday. This is Pocket Out Daily. The official news today continue to be elusive, so uh, let's start the video with uh, Samsung because we have uh, possible launch dates for the Galaxy S23 FE. After many rumors about the device getting completely canceled and uh, many others about it coming back to life, we have the first real signs of its existence. Galaxy Club has uncovered details about the Galaxy S23 FE thanks to the Safety Korea website. The source also reveals that uh, the model number of the phone is the SMS711. This model number has actually made appearances in import and export databases in the past, meaning that it has been in the works for a while now. As for the launch date, well, there's an unpacked event for next month where we should see the new foldables and wearables, but there's no evidence that we could see a mid-ranger make an appearance. WinFuture reported that the phone could be shown off in August or September at a separate event, and honestly, that actually makes more sense to me. Now, as for the rest of the specifications, we don't know much, but uh, we've heard that it should feature the same 50 megapixel primary sensor that we find on the S23 or something similar, but this phone is then powered by the Exynos 20. 2200 chipset. Yeah, I know. Not very exciting. We'll keep you posted. Moving on, let's stick to Samsung because we have more information than the Galaxy Z Flip 5. Okay, so we already know that this year, the biggest change of this Z Flip will be the outer display. And the biggest question is, how does Samsung plan to use all that extra space? Well, it's now reported that the company is working on bringing select applications to the 3.4 inch cover display. Sam Mobile reported that the Galaxy Z Flip 5's outer display will get some optimized applications directly from Google. Apparently, it includes Google Google Maps, Google Messages, and YouTube. These applications will also be backed by Samsung apps, which the report says to expect to be ready for the cover display. However, it is still unclear if Samsung will be able to match Motorola, which can run virtually any Android application on the outer Razer Plus display, even if not necessarily to perfection. More on that soon. Now let's talk about Google since we have detailed information on the Pixel 8 series. According to a report, both the base and the Pro models will have an updated 50 megapixel main camera sensor with Samsung's ISOCELL GN2 replacing the GN1 from previous generations. The report also mentions the Pixel 8 will keep the same ultra wide camera, but this time it'll have a 0.55x zoom ratio, which is uh, ever so slightly wider. Now on the other hand, the Pixel 8 Pro will feature a new 64 megapixel Sony IMX7 7 sensor for that ultra wide at 0.49x zoom ratio, which is an improvement, and it is also retaining the 48 megapixel Samsung GM5 telephoto lens with 5x optical zoom. Both Pixel phones will also bring the same selfie cameras. And by the way, the thermometer sensor that was leaked a while back is exclusive to the Pixel 8 Pro. Now in terms of software, the upcoming Pixel series will have new features like the torch option that automatically adjusts the LED flash intensity to prevent overexposed low light shots and videos. We're also getting scene segmentation that will allow selective AI processing for different parts of an image. Overall, it's looking good, but I thought that all that other new software tricks were already there. Anyways. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about Apple because we have new reports about what's next for spatial computing. I know, wrong time to be traveling during all the WWDC coverage, but I do have some thoughts on the Vision Pro that I'll share later. For now, I'm just gonna focus on the news that happened earlier today. Mark Gurman reported that Cupertino is working to launch a more affordable version of the Vision Pro headset sometime in 2025, which makes sense as Pro indicates that there should be a non-Pro variant. And the timing also indicates a launch precisely a year after the Pro model goes live. Also, any reduction 
production and that $3,500 price tag will make mass adoption easier. In the report, German also claims that the company was initially thinking of delaying the announcement of the Vision Pro's price due to the negative publicity, but uh, preferred to give everyone nine months to get used to it. I mean, after announcing a far more expensive Mac Pro, I mean, come on, I guess they were trying to water it down. However, the new headset could be called the Vision or Vision One. And as for the compromises, it might use lower tier screens, a less powerful chip, cut down on cameras, or even require AirPods for the spatial audio feature in order to shed the price tag. Now, on the other hand, Apple will try to retain some of the core features, such as external eyesight screen and the hand tracking system. So yeah, we're still years away, so we'll just have to wait. But in today's question, let us know, I mean, what did you think about the Vision Pro overall? Because in my case, I actually like it, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around how I feel about a lot of the things. But I'm curious to know what you think in the comments and particularly, what would the ideal price for you be considering that this doesn't necessarily compare to other headsets that are currently in the market? Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram and follow me on my personal handles to see me enjoy events because they're cool. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.